How many times over the last 10 years when we talk about a port of Final Fantasy VIII or Parasite Eve to modern consoles that it was not possible due to lost source? Source code is fundamental code written by a programmer which can be compiled and then run by a target computer or game console. Its main purpose is to be easily read and understood by humans. When I heard about .mu finally remastering Final Fantasy VIII, it poses questions. How do you exactly lose source code and how is it even possible to reconstruct a game without source code? There's tons of speculation surrounding Final Fantasy VIII that the code appeared on some long lost backup tape or CD somewhere, but the chances of that are quite slim. It was well known that in the 90s, Square did not use any form of version control at all and likely threw out old hardware complete with the copies of the source code. Over time, the code was lost and forgotten. But back in those days, it happened more than you think. Without any version control software, a hard disk failure could spell bad news. I personally have lost source code over the years due to corrupted hard disks. It happens. Modern cloud-based version control like GitHub wasn't around back then, and unless the company had a good off-site backup strategy, there were elevated risks. Failing hardware is always a threat, and without safeguards such as modern cloud-based version control, it can be catastrophic. Now, I think it's fair to say that .mu and Square Enix have been reversing Final Fantasy VIII, or at least consulting with someone that has been reversing the game. There are many different open source efforts to reverse engineer Final Fantasy VIII, and they are all in various states of completion. So the takeaway is it's not an insurmountable problem to overcome, it just takes time. One thing we can't rule out about Final Fantasy VIII is that crucial information was left inside the game to make the job of reverse engineering easier. Like lost source code, this happened more than you think. One of the biggest video game releases of 1996 was Blizzard North's action RPG, Diablo. Diablo was the vision of David Brevik, who at the time was a lead developer for Condor Games. Condor had developed Justice League Task Force, a fighting game that was produced by Sunsoft and released for the Sega Genesis in 1995, with the Super Nintendo version being co-developed by Blizzard. Brevik pitched the idea for Diablo as a turn-based RPG to different publishers but was turned down. But Blizzard, coming off the success of Warcraft, picked up the game and requested that it be changed from turn-based to real-time and that it must support multiplayer via both local area and online on the internet. Brevik agreed, and once he got the green light for the game, Condor Games became Blizzard North, and Diablo was released in 1996. It was a smash hit on the PC, with over 2.5 million games sold. Diablo brought classic action role-playing hack and slash dungeon crawling to the masses with its quick jump-in gameplay mechanics and simplistic user interface. Grab a quest, head to a dungeon, kill monsters, get loot and level up. The original game featured three different characters to play, local and internet online multiplayer. The dungeon levels are all randomly generated and made you want to come back to farm better loot for your character over and over again. It's fair to say that Diablo changed the face of computer gaming forever. It spawned two more sequels and Blizzard are continuing to develop updates to the game, even to this day. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones. Phone. Right? But the original Diablo was a PC exclusive game, which had console owners drooling. The game was totally controllable with a mouse. Click where you want to move to and your character will move there. Click an NPC to talk to them and click on the monsters to attack. This user experience hasn't changed and is a staple of Diablo style games. It's what makes the game so addictive. The mouse buttons would also allow you to heal and cast spells too. It was simple and brilliant. In 1998, Climax Studios, who had worked on porting some of Blizzard's PC games to consoles previously, release Diablo for the PlayStation 1. When any Diablo game is released for a console, it's a big deal. Diablo is a PC game, and when the PlayStation 1 port was announced, fans of the game were excited. On the PS1, there's no mouse, so the game had its control scheme changed to support direct movement with the analog stick, and hotkeys of different actions were assigned to the buttons. It's a solid port, but compared to the crisp SVGA visuals of the PC version, there's something lacking. 
mostly due to the limitations of the PlayStation hardware itself. Climax did a good job overall with what they had. There's even two player local co-op built in, which is a welcome addition. Back on the PC, Diablo's requirements at the time was Windows 95 with a mouse, keyboard and a CD-ROM drive and at least a Pentium processor running at 60 MHz. It also utilized DirectX 3 for its graphics API. For the longest time, trying to get Diablo to run on modern PCs is almost impossible. There were some third-party patches and hacks that you could use with some varying levels of success. But for years, it was difficult to run the game unless you had access to an old Windows 95 computer. Most people just didn't bother, and the game was all but abandoned in favour of the sequels. It wasn't until recently when GOG released Diablo 1 and 2 for modern machines earlier this year. The GOG version patches routines in the executable graphics and sound APIs to allow you to play the game on your modern PC, and allows you to hack and slash to your heart's desire. But it's still only Windows based. We've gone from Windows 95 to Windows 10. But what if you wanted to play Diablo on a Mac, Linux or even a game console, like for example the Nintendo Switch? Since Blizzard has all but abandoned the game, there is no simple way of running it on anything other than a Windows PC. Now I want to be clear that I'm not suggesting that Blizzard has lost the source code for Diablo 1. The game isn't just relevant to their interests, and it hasn't been since 2001, since the last patch. But as mentioned, one possible way to bring the game forward is to reverse engineer the game. Reverse engineering can literally take thousands upon thousands of hours to accomplish, but in the case of Diablo, some lack of attention and oversight made this game significantly easier to break down. In Japan, Sony had a long reputation of not double-checking things left on retail copies of games. Back in 2013, the entire source code for Beatmania 5th Mix was discovered on a Beatmania Best Hits PlayStation 1 game. And when Climax Studios was given the job of porting Diablo to the PlayStation 1, naturally Blizzard had sent them the source code as their starting point. But somehow inexplicably on the Japanese version of Diablo 1 contained a file on the disk with the extension .sym. Now if you're not a programmer you may not be familiar with this, but this is a debug symbol file and contains names of source files, all global variables, the names of functions and types of variables being used among other things. A debugger will use the symbol file to assist with stepping through the code at runtime and to identify and fix bugs, but once the game reaches a release candidate, the release version of the game is provided and any symbolic information should be removed. But for some reason, on the Japanese version of Diablo, the game retained the symbols file. A debug symbols file does not include the source code itself, but gives crucial information on everything needed to reconstruct the source code from scratch. But there's even more to this story. Over on the PC, the entire assets of the Diablo game, including graphics, level data, movie files, sounds, and more, are stored in an archive known as the MPQ. This is a proprietary Blizzard archive file format that's been used in almost all Blizzard games since Diablo. Inside the MPQ, there's one particular file that contains a debug version of Diablo.exe, which again, if you disassemble it, contains crucial information about the game, with things known as assertion statements. These statements are checks to determine if a piece of code, or whatever it is, holds true. For example, if I write a simple line of code like this, the assertion statement must hold true, otherwise the program will error out. It deliberately stops the code from continuing, so the programmer knows there is a bug in the code that needs to be fixed. When a debug version of an executable is built, the assertion statements are built into the code. When a release version of the code is built, they are stripped out. If we look at the hidden Diablo debug executable in the MPQ file, it contains lots of assertion statements that give more information about the functions and variables used in the game. It also matches the names of the source code files that were found in the PlayStation 1 symbols file. With both of these discoveries, it's now possible to recreate the source code and completely reverse engineer the game. And that's exactly what a developer known as Galaxy Hacks did in 2018. It took him four months and over 1,000 hours to reconstruct the Diablo source code from scratch. And with the help of the debug and symbol information discovery, meant that the Diablo executable was running once again on a modern Windows 10 PC. 
The project, known as Devolution, is a faithful recreation of Diablo and keeps everything exactly the way it was originally designed, including the bugs. But because it's open source, it can now be updated, maintained and brought forward to 2019 levels of quality. And speaking of bringing this game forward, I wanted to see how portable this could be, so I dusted off my old friend the Nintendo Switch and ported Devolution to it. It looks great in both handheld and dock modes. This port didn't take very long, maybe a few nights. The Devolution source code is maintained well and is truly portable to other systems. No longer are we constrained to using Windows. This code would run on just about anything out there. The biggest things that I needed to do was implement the PlayStation 1 style movement using the left analog stick to play the game. Remember, PC Diablo uses a mouse, so that does not translate well to the Switch at all. Of course, I could have implemented touch, and that may be something for later, but this is more of a proof of concept. And as a bonus to everyone, and those who use a modified Switch, my port is available with full source code and binaries. It's open source homebrew after all. Check it out on my GitHub page. Link is in the description below. So if you have a modded Switch, download it, drop in your MPQ file from Diablo 1, and enjoy some old school 1996 hack and slash Diablo action on your Nintendo Switch. So in conclusion, while source code makes life much easier for modern ports and remakes, it's not necessarily needed. Reverse engineering techniques and thorough investigation of all assets in code from the original game may all that be required. Galaxy Hacks reversed Diablo and was just one person. With a much larger team working on reverse engineering of the game, like .mu working on Final Fantasy VIII, you don't need the source code. There is everything in the binary files. And with a stroke of luck or two, you can recreate the game and enjoy it once again on your modern game systems. So there you have it guys, that's the story of Diablo from Blizzard in 1996 that was completely reverse engineered in 2018 by Galaxy Hacks and the source code was completely reconstructed from absolutely nothing other than the snippets of debug information that were found on the discs themselves on the original release disc on the Japanese PlayStation 1 version as well as the PC version of the game and you know it's something that I really wanted to illustrate to you guys that reverse engineering of games is achievable and is possible you know to get games forward into 2019 it's not an insurmountable problem if you put the right group of people on the problem then you can achieve results now reverse engineering is quite tedious as we've seen but it does work and I do believe that Square Enix is that's exactly what they're doing for Final Fantasy 8 and I do believe there are other teams out there that are looking to reverse engineer and reconstruct games to bring them forward in a modern era for those people that are interested in the switch port of Diablo or Devolution as it's known as check it out on my github page I will leave a link in the description below go ahead and play with it enjoy it if you do have a modded switch it's completely free to download of course and the source code is all available it is quite buggy it's an alpha release you know there's still some things that are wrong with it but hey i'll continue to keep it updated for you guys and you know really enjoy it and let me know what you think about it well guys that will do it for this video i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think about it in the comments below as always don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now